Now that is a brisket. That is the briskiest of briskets. Today we're gonna do brisket on the Traeger. Brisket is a big investment and you don't wanna screw it up. So I'm gonna make it easy for you. Selecting a brisket, trimming, injecting, rubbing, smoking, wrapping, finishing, slicing. I'll break it down for you step by step so you can elevate your brisket game. Let's do it. All right, selecting a brisket. If this is your first brisket, I highly recommend getting a prime grade brisket or at the very least a choice. Don't go with a select if this is your first brisket. You gotta splurge a little bit and get some quality meat. Now make sure to get a whole brisket with both muscles attached. That means the point muscle down here and the flat muscle up here are attached. You don't just have the flat by itself. This is a 12 to 15 pound brisket, so make sure your brisket is in that weight range. And this is a bit of an old wives tale, but you can do a test in the store to see if your brisket bends. And if it bends, it's supposed to be a good brisket. And if it's really stiff, then that means you might have a lot of extra hard fat that you need to trim off anyway, but you're still paying for it. Now, speaking of paying for it, if you're at the butcher, ask them if they can trim your brisket for you. Often they'll carve off a lot of that fat that you would be trimming off anyway at home. So you don't wanna be paying for that fat because you're only eating the meat. Let's talk about injection. I've got about four cups of injection here. All it is is beef broth. You can pick up one of these injection needles cheap on Amazon. I think when I bought this, it was like $5. So get yourself one of these and do yourself a favor. It makes life a lot easier. Now we're gonna inject right through the plastic because it makes cleanup a breeze. When you're injecting through the plastic, none of that liquid can get out. So when we do open this up, all we have to do is slice it open, throw out that plastic with all the excess moisture and cleanup is done. We're gonna do an injection every one inch over the brisket. What you do is you insert into the brisket all the way. Then you slowly let the juices out as you pull back. So you're getting the juices all the way out through the length of this hole you just made. When you're almost out, you wanna shift the needle using the same hole, do about a 45 degree turn, and then push it in again. We're using the same hole because we don't wanna create a whole bunch of holes all over this brisket to let that moisture out. All right, we are done injecting. I'm gonna put this to the side, and all we're gonna do is take a sharp knife, point it upwards, we'll insert it, break the seal, cut the package open, And we're gonna release this brisket into the world. Oh, oh, that's a big boy. And then we'll just dump this into the garbage. Trimming your brisket. Now I could spend a ton of time on this, but I'm gonna show you guys a simple method. All we really need to do is remove these hard kernels of fat on either side of the brisket. So there's one right about here, right where the point meets the flat. And you can see when I poke my knife into it, it's, it's pretty hard and it's not that soft fat that's all gonna render down and be delicious when you bite into it. So we're gonna carve that out. And then on the other side, usually there's another hard piece of fat here. My butcher has luckily carved that out, but you might need to carve that off yourself. The third thing is there's a lot of fat on this side of the brisket. So usually I like to shave it down to about a quarter inch thickness, but for this cook, I'm gonna leave probably about a half inch because I wanna be a little bit decadent in this cook and leave some more fat on it. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at the flat muscle. We're gonna look at the direction that the grain is running. So you can clearly see because it's not cooked yet, the grain is running in this direction. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a perpendicular cut right at the edge here. And this little notch is gonna tell us where to slice it when this brisket is done. All right, now let's get our rub on. I've got a simple rub recipe. I've got it in the description section below. I'm gonna put it in the video as well so you guys can conveniently reference it. I use a shaker bottle that's emptied out of spices that I have sitting around. I like to mix all my spices in here so I can shake it up and then I can evenly distribute it over the brisket. So we're gonna mix in half a cup of paprika. This gives it a nice red color. I really like paprika. Gonna use this tin foil as a bit of a funnel so we don't create a mess. And now we're gonna do half a cup of kosher salt. You don't wanna miss out on the salt for a brisket rub because this is what makes brisket brisket, baby. Now important to note, I'm using kosher salt. This is much less salty than table salt, so make sure you get the right salt. 
Half a cup of white sugar. Now, a lot of people don't like to use sugar in their brisket rub. I like sugar on pretty much any smoked meat that I make, and especially on brisket. I think it adds a nice flavor, so we're gonna go with it. I also think it adds to the bark as well. And you can't have brisket without coarse black pepper. So we're gonna do half a cup of that. Now finally, we're going to add some garlic powder, two tablespoons, and two tablespoons of onion powder. And now look at that, that's beautiful. But we're gonna shake it all up. And this is the beauty of these shaker bottles. You can easily mix up this mixture. And now we're gonna start with the fat cap because I am gonna be cooking this on the Traeger fat cap down. So we always do the side that's facing down first because we don't wanna mess up the rub on the presentation side. So we'll go up pretty high and we'll just do a nice even coat. I like to do one pass because sometimes the pepper likes to float to the top of this shaker bottle. So I like to do an even coat and then I give it a bit of a shake, do another pass. Don't be afraid to overdo it on the rub. This is a big cut of meat and it can take it. To get the sides, all you gotta do is pull it up like that. And now we'll flip it and we'll do the top side. Oh man, this is difficult to do one-handed. So this is where we wanna be a little bit more careful, a little bit more even with our application of the rub. So I'm gonna go a little bit higher up. Again, I'm doing one pass because that pepper likes to float to the top of this. And there we go, we're gonna let this brisket sweat out and absorb those spices and absorb all that salt for about an hour at room temperature. While we're doing that, we're gonna head over to our Traeger. We're gonna set it, preheat it to 225 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm using hickory pellets for this smoke because it goes really nice with brisket meat. All right, this brisket is looking good, so it's time to put it on the Traeger. We're gonna put it fat side down in the Traeger with the flat side towards the smokestack. So that means the thinnest part of the muscle towards the smokestack and the point is facing to the right. And now this is the fun part because you just have to leave this at 225 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna leave it for about four to six hours until it reaches an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna wrap it. All right, now it's been six hours and my Traeger app is showing that the internal temperature of the brisket right where the point meets the flat is 165 degrees Fahrenheit. We're taking a look at this brisket. It's got a nice deep red mahogany look to it and that's perfect. That's where you wanna pull it off. The moisture is starting to come out of it. It's starting to hit the stall and that's exactly when we wanna take it off the Traeger and we wanna wrap it in foil. Now what we're gonna do is called the Texas crutch or the wrapping method. We're going to wrap our brisket tightly in aluminum foil. This is gonna do two things. It's going to speed up the cooking process. This thing is gonna cook a lot faster than if you left it unwrapped. And it's also going to retain a lot more moisture and make this brisket a lot more tender. So I'm gonna move this to the side for now. And now we're going to take some heavy duty aluminum foil. I get the widest kind I can because it's a lot easier than trying to fit two sheets together. I'm gonna to pull out a sheet. We'll lay that down and now we'll take our brisket and we'll lay it right in the middle of this aluminum foil. And we wanna make a little pocket here. Putting this foil as tight and as close to the edges of, of the brisket as possible. And now I'm just gonna leave it like this open with a little area to access because I'm going to take the rest of my brisket injection. Remember this was just pure beef stock and we're going to dump the rest of it. It's probably around half a cup to a cup. We're going to dump that in, but make sure you don't dump it on top of that nice bark that we've just formed. Just put it around the edges. That's just gonna add a little bit extra moisture, keep things nice and moist in there. There we go, this brisket is wrapped and it's ready to go back on the Traeger. We're gonna let it ride at 225 degrees Fahrenheit until the internal temperature comes up to around 200 to 205 degrees Fahrenheit. And at that point, we're gonna check it for doneness. Now this is the most important part and it's gonna make or break this brisket cook. We wanna make sure that the internal temperature of the brisket comes up to 203 to 205 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature. Now once we hit that temperature zone, we need to do our three part test. 
The first part of the test we've already met because we're at the right temperature, 203 to 205. The second part of the test is the probe test. Insert a probe into the point and the flat muscle to test what the resistance is like. It should feel like your probe is going through room temperature butter. Now, one thing to consider is that the Traeger temperature probe is quite thick, and when you're pressing it in, you're gonna get a lot of resistance. So keep that in mind. It might be done even though you're getting a lot of resistance and it doesn't feel like room temperature butter because that Traeger temperature probe is so thick. That's why I like to use my Thermapen for the probe test because it's a much thinner and skinnier probe. Now the third test is the feel test. First of all, you wanna put a pan underneath your brisket so you don't lose any of the juices while you're doing this. You put it in the pan and then you wanna get some heavy duty heat resistant gloves. It should feel really wobbly and there shouldn't be a lot of resistance. It shouldn't feel stiff. It should feel like it almost wants to fall apart. Now if something doesn't feel right, then give it another 30 minutes and come check back later and do all those three tests over again. You really don't wanna pull it out too early because you need to give it enough time at this temperature for all of that interconnective tissue to render and come apart and not be tough. All right, so this brisket is looking good and I'm calling it at the 11 hour mark. By the way, all of my cook notes are in the description section below with all of the different temperatures that the brisket went through throughout the entire cook. So check that out if you're interested. All right guys, now we're gonna let this steam out a little bit by opening it up. And now we're gonna close this back up again. And now we're gonna put our brisket in a cooler for at least two hours. And guys, this is super important. We need to let our brisket rest to give it time to reabsorb all of that moisture and settle down a little bit. Otherwise, if you cut right into it, all that moisture is gonna gush out and you're gonna have a dry brisket. So I like to prep the cooler ahead of time by putting some hot water into it. And then I leave it in there for about 15 minutes. I open it up, let it steam out, and then I dump all that water out because I want to retain the heat inside of the cooler. You don't wanna be putting hot meat in a cold cooler. All right, we've let this brisket rest for two hours and we're gonna open it up, peel back that tin foil and look at this thing. Oh my God, the bark has darkened a little bit from when we first saw it, when we just let the steam out. It's looking super delicious. Lots of juices in there. It's reabsorbed a lot of those juices. We're gonna take it out of the cooler. We're gonna set it down. And if you take a look at it, this is what we like to call the wobbly. If you hit it like this, it's gonna jiggle like a big piece of jello. And that's how you know this thing is gonna be good. Now this bark is really nice, but I like it a little bit darker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my, what I call my finishing bark rub. And I've got this recipe in the description section below. Basically it's one tablespoon of food safe coconut shell charcoal powder. It's got a tablespoon of paprika and it's got two tablespoons of brown sugar. And this is going to just help the bark look a lot darker. After we've applied this finishing rub to the top of the brisket, we're gonna throw it back in the Traeger at 225 degrees Fahrenheit for about half an hour to an hour, just until the bark starts drying out and we get it to where we want it to be. Now this is personal preference and you guys don't have to do this, but I like taking the additional step of making that bark look awesome. All right, I am done waiting. It's time to cut into this. Usually I like to cut it against the grain, starting on the flat side. Remember that notch that we cut out during the trimming process? That's gonna tell you where to cut. So we see this notch right here. All you have to do is line up parallel to it and slice quarter inch slices all the way down the flat muscle. And that is gonna give you perfect brisket slices. But because this might be your first or maybe your second brisket ever, I like to do what's called the glory cut. So what we do is we just line up with that notch. So we make sure that we're going against the grain. We go all the way to where the point muscle meets the flat right here. And we're just gonna give it a cut right down the middle. Just using nice long strokes with this brisket cutting knife. This is just a large bread knife. It's perfect for cutting brisket. Oh man, it's just, it's cutting through like a hot knife through brisket. And now the big reveal. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at that. Look at that. Smoke ring all along the outside. Nice black bark contrasting that pink smoke ring. Look at all the juice inside of this thing. That is crazy. Now here's why we call it the glory cut because we're gonna press down 
right on top here. And look at all those juices coming out. Oh my God. Oh man. It's a brisket waterfall. All right, now that we've made that cut, the meat is gonna start oxidizing. So we wanna protect it right away as soon as we slice it using that au jus from the pan and the drippings that we got from the brisket. So make sure you save those because you're gonna need them to rub on the outside of each cut. So I've just got it on the side right here and we just give it a brush like that and all that fat is gonna prevent the oxygen from interacting with the meat and oxidizing it. All right, now this is a long cook. I've done about 11 hours of cooking. I did another two hours of resting. I did another half an hour to an hour back on the Traeger to finish it and now I'm slicing it up. So I'm in about 12, 13, 14 hours right now. It's 11 p.m. at night and I'm tired and you guys are gonna be tired after you make this too. So I'm gonna give you an easy recipe up next, how to make buffalo hot wings on the Traeger and how to get them crispy and nice and hot. So check that one out. We're just gonna continue to slice this. And you know I gotta taste one of these slices. Look at this. Mm. Perfect.